Hello students, welcome back to my channel. We are doing evolution chapter from grade 12 biology, CBSC topics. Till now we have covered many topics under this chapter. We looked at different evidences of evolution in the previous video. This video will be all about theories of evolution. So there are majorly two theories that are given in the textbook. We will go through both of them. First is the theory called use and disuse by Lamarck. Next one is Darwinism which includes natural selection as well as branching descent or adaptive radiation. Let's understand both. First theory is called as Lamarck's use and disuse theory. What does that mean? It means that adaptations or physical changes that happen during the lifetime of an organism is carried on to the next generation. What do you mean by that? For example, giraffe which had to go on extending its neck to get the leaf for its food. It went on extending and because of that extension of the neck, giraffe got longer neck. That's what his theory is. This is a statement for it. But another scientist, August Wiesmann, disproved this theory. How did he disprove? He took some mice and cut off its tail. After uh, cutting off the tail, he started inbreeding them or breeding them between them, the, cut, um, the mouse which had cut tails. He found out that in the upcoming generation also, all the mice had tails. That means that whatever adaptations the organism is undergoing during its lifetime is not getting carried on, like how he, this Lamarck is saying. Alright, so that theory was disproved. Next theory is Darwinism. Charles Darwin, a um, naturalist, took a voyage around the world in a ship named HMS Beagle. You need to know this name. And he found out certain things. What are his conclusions? You can get a one mark question. Two things he found out. That is, there is similarity between organisms that are already there right now. For example, there is a similarity between a dog you see and a cat you see. Right? Both are existing right now and they have a similarity. He also found that there are similarities between organisms that are there right now and previously existing. So these were his observations and he published all his findings in a book called Origin of Species. There was another scientist whose work also influenced um, Charles Darwin. His name and where he worked, you should know. His name is Alfred Wallis and he worked in Malay Archipelago. One more question you can expect from this, so please learn that up as well. Now what does this theory say? What is the first theory? Natural selection. Another is adaptive radiation. Two things we are learning. Okay. Natural selection, under this theory, there are certain points that you should know. What are they? First and foremost, a rapid multiplication occurs. That is, every organism gives birth to its progenies in more than required amount. So, too many progenies are created than required. What happens when th that, that um, is happening? There will be a competition between the organisms within and within the species also, outside the species also. Right? So, this competition occurs for... What for? For food as well as space, a competition occurs. That competition will lead to a struggle between them and whichever organism has proper variation. You know what is variation, right? Uh, the genetic changes that are there between organisms of the same type, like progenies of the same type, will be slightly different from each other. That is called variation. So, Whichever, whichever organism has suitable variation for adapting to the environment that is there right now will survive and that is called survival of the fittest. Alright, inheritance of, so let's say an organism has variations that are useful for it to survive, those will be carried on to the next generation and this will give out new species, species speciation it is called. 
these are the points that you should write under the heading natural selection all right now we should know some examples for this as well natural selection first example is about peppered moth or biston butillaria which is given in the textbook okay so what is this there are two varieties or two traits that are seen in this moth it's a moth okay one is it has white wings another is it has dark wings so initially before industrial revolution more amount of these white winged moth were seen why is that it was because before industrial revolution all the trees looked more paler okay so this white colored moth could easily hide from the predator but the black ones were also found at that time were easily picked up by the predators and this number was less okay so that's what happened during before industrial revolution during industrial revolution because of all the soot and pollution tree trunks became darker now what will happen the white colored moth will be easily seen it cannot camouflage anymore it will be easily seen by the predator so those will be picked up by the predator right then what started happening the black colored moth increased in number so what exactly happened here nature selects the ones that are properly adapted to the situation or environment that is around it okay another two more examples are also given in the textbook that is more use of herbicide pesticide etc is resulting in resistant varieties of herbs and pests same way more use of antibiotics are resulting in antibiotic resistant bacteria all right again another possible question is give examples of evolution by anthropogenic action what does that mean human action all the three examples that you looked at first case is with the peppered moth second is with uh, herbicide third is with antibiotic resistant bacteria all these are due to human action isn't it so all this can be written for that answer as well so